praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus. There is so much we have to thank God for Jesus for. So much love that he sent Jesus to die for us. And he did. He died. And for our sins, so that he can remove us from the bondage to the devil. To bring the good things of life unto us. To give us a wonderful life here. And finally to give us eternal life in heaven. He restores us to the image and likeness of God. Wonderful things. We learn from his examples. There are things we must learn from him. Today we are going to read John chapter 4, verse 34. John 4, 34. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. My food is to do the will of the Father who sent me and to complete that work. That is wonderful. That's a very big statement. If you are a follower of Jesus, you should do what he did. You should live the way he lived. You know what it says in 1 John chapter 2? It says, whoever claims to be in him, that is in Jesus, must also walk as he walked. That is to say, do the things he did while he was on earth. Say the kind of things he said while he was on earth. And the scripture goes on to say, as he is in heaven, so are we in this world. Do it his own way. And here he laid down a very big example. I have food to eat. And what's that food? To do the will of God. Are you doing the will of God? Does it occur to any one of us that that is the only thing that we should do if we are children of God? What is the will of God for your life? Apart from the fact that it's a general will that God desires that we should live righteously and holy in this world. What are the other things that God purposes for your life that you should do? What does God expect of you from moment to moment, from day to day? What is the general focus that God has given for your life? So many of us define things for ourselves. So many of us are not able to walk the way God expected us to walk. So many of us are not doing the things that God will expect us to do. Some of us come up with plans that we think we should pursue and go ahead and pursue them. I know the strange thing. You put down a plan, start to pursue it. When it gets wrong, you run back to God, I'm your child. Some who don't even go that far, you put up a plan and you say, Lord, this is my plan, support it. Was he the initiator? Did he even tell you that that is what you should do? The scripture says, they that are the sons of God are, are what? They are led by the Spirit of God. Did the Holy Spirit lead you into that plan? Did the Holy Spirit lead you into that endeavor? Is it the Holy Spirit that is leading you in the direction that you are going? Some of us get into marriages on our own. We start businesses on our own. We go to work somewhere on our own. We even go to schools on our own. Do we remember that the Holy Spirit should lead us? My food is to do the will of him that sent me. Then he goes on to say, if you claim to be in him, do it the way he did it. Are we allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us? You know what Jesus said? I'll say nothing except what I hear my father say. I do nothing except what I see my father do. Who amongst us can say that? Living as he lived, according to his example. Always in step with the father. Do we live in step with God? Can you say that your life is structured the way God wants it to go? I don't know the person who can say that. Because anyway, in many things we offend God. But who amongst us is even trying? That is the issue. In your foolishness, in my foolishness, are we trying to live that life of total obedience to God, doing his will at all times? And anyway, he added the other side, and to complete it, how many things do you bring to a successful end in your life? How many of the things of God are you still doing which you had already started? 
how many do we give up have way? Even pastor, how many things have you given up have way? Not to talk of the church member, the church officers, the prayer band member you were at a certain point. Very committed. How are you today, even if you are still there? The choir member you were at a certain point. Very, very enthusiastic. Does that same enthusiasm continue till today? To do the work of God and to complete it. Are you doing the work of God unto completion with the same zeal that you started? So many of us can talk about the kind of zeal we had when we became born again. Talk about this kind of zeal that we had when the Holy Spirit came upon us. Is that zeal still there? How will you complete it if you do complete it at all? And some of us can sit down and think of the kind of things we have abandoned halfway. So many things we have failed in. And there are a litany of them. Do we even think about them? We don't. We just pass by. If you are an adult, I want you to cast your mind back on the kind of things that you have abandoned halfway. In your life, in the things of God, in the general affairs of living. How many things have you taken to the end? How many things are you continuing in? And like I said, with the same level of zeal. Even pastor, how is your zeal for the work of God? The same way it started, or dwindled halfway. How many times have you gone completely and well just managed to be there? Because you have to put up an appearance. Are you doing the will of God? The work of God to complete it? He said, and to complete his work. Is that what is happening with you? Is that what you are doing? Can you tell yourself, I am following up in the work of God as he had shown to me, as he has given to me the responsibility he has put upon me. I am following up so distinctively and doing it so well. How many of us can say that? And that's the crux of this thing. If you claim to be in Christ, live as he lived. And if you think you are in Christ today, do it as he is doing in heaven. In heaven, will he disobey God? In heaven, will he do anything remotely to tamper on the work of God or reduce the intensity of the zeal that is involved in it? How many people will he blame for not doing what he ought to do? And we do it. I am no longer singing in the choir because somebody said something. Or, well, I just sing for the sake of singing. Perfunctory, I am there because I'm expected to be there. I'm in the prayer band. I go for prayer meeting just because I have to be there. Church officer, church worker, I have to be there, so I'm there. Serving the eyes of men. It is called eye service. And God rejects all of them. You know what the scripture said? If we serve men, then are we not the servants of God? Are you a servant of God? Does God claim you for his own as his servant? Watch how you walk. There will be an accounting for the things that we are doing. If Jesus came today, what would you say about how you are doing it? Turn around today. And if you are doing it with the same zeal and consistently, go at it. Because God is surely rewarding you and will bless you abundantly. But if you are not, this is the moment of change. This is the moment of repentance. This is the moment to ask God to have mercy on you, to restore you to the path of his zeal and enthusiasm, that you will do it well for him and do it unto the end. And it will be well with you now and always. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen.